Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Group Chat. You got me and D, and we got an interview. We got an action-packed episode. We're going to jump into our interview. Who's our guest today, D? AJ and Austin from Slosson & Co. They are going to uh, launch their second cohort of their friends and family program. And one lucky Kathy can walk away with a $25,000 grant to start their business. I'll tell you what, if I couldn't get AJ, I guess I would go to Kim. But, you know, she's a number two. <laughs> she's, in our, she's our number two pick. Yeah, she's our number two pick right behind Slauson. Uh, no, these guys are great. They're good friends. They're doing a really awesome thing. And then we have a lot of shit to talk about. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on today. So we're going to do the interview and then we're going to run through a bunch of topics. We got a lot. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, Group Chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. All right, everyone. We have a very special opportunity for Group Chat listeners. Uh, our good friends, AJ and Austin from Slauson & Co. are on the podcast today. Uh, to talk about a special opportunity. Before we get into that, uh, AJ's been on the podcast a bunch over the years, um, and him and his partner have started an incredible fund out of uh, South LA called Slauson & Co. And uh, I want them to kind of talk through the vision of the fund and what you guys are doing before we dive into the special opportunity. So first, thank you for coming on the podcast today. Appreciate you uh, having us, man. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. I'm excited to be on. I've been jealous of AJ because he hopped on before, and I never got the, I never got the invite. So I appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah. No, so yeah, uh, high, high level. Um, yeah, grateful to be back here. Appreciate all the things you guys are doing and, and all the game that you guys give all of us as listeners. Uh, high level on on Slauson and Co. We're an early stage, pre seed, seed stage venture capital firm, rooted in this idea of economic inclusion. So. Austin and I have been friends for since high school, uh, about 20 years now. Uh, D, you and I worked together with the crew on Queensbridge in a, in a, in a previous lifetime. So kind of really marrying a lot of the, the philanthropic work we did to kind of create more opportunities for a wider variety of people. As you know, venture capital is, is historically, most of those dollars go to white men in six cities. Uh, very, very fine demographic. We just believe that innovation exists outside of that demographic in those geographies. So, you know, we're in this fortunate position uh, where we were able to kind of come together after a couple of decades of friendship and marry all of our interests in, in, in providing um, not only capital, but um, resources and guidance and connections from, you know, all walks of life towards supporting the founders that we get behind. And so would you... You still are considered a venture, a venture fund in in the in the f normal state, though, right? Like, obviously, with a with a deeper purpose. But if as listeners listening, Slots and Co is the same as Andreessen Horowitz. Yeah, uh, not quite the assets under management just yet, but uh, <laughs> but but in the same bucket. We're definitely a venture firm, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of people, you know, hear about what we're doing or hear about what like how we approach the the work and hear us say things like economic inclusion and sometimes they think that oh like this is basically some just a philanthropic uh uh effort that you know trying to make sure that that venture capital or tech is more diverse and things like that but the reality is like like both of us come from uh backgrounds that we ran funds that that, that were all about returns and um you know we we know that if we do this mission basically it will have a huge impact on the greater thing but but the reality is if we don't produce returns then um then, then it's not going to help anybody basically yeah. and so um so the exciting part though is that we actually think that the insight that we have on backing people that are overlooked historically is actually uh puts us in a position to outperform like we're not here to like create a fund that you know people will hear about and be like oh those are nice guys like we're here to be be the best so like name your fund I, i'm out to beat them we're we're, we're out to yeah. be number one you know um of no course. compromise nothing n nothing like that so we just think it's a, a massive opportunity and, and in the end it'll help people that look like all of us like uh get access to more capital and and so do you guys when when you say like underrepresented in venture like who does that include cuz like yeah you know 
Yeah, so that's a good question. So if you look at the statistics, um, I mean, it's 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 abysmal. Um, a, a lot of times, first first and foremost, the statistics are sad with like a lot of different folks, like Black and Latino in particular, um, are are one and two percent of venture capital dollars, respectively. Women funded companies are less than five percent. Um, like it's, it's terrible. So like, um, but so when we take the approach of being very inclusive, what we think is it'll just be gravitate being more representative of really the entrepreneurial ecosystem and more broadly, you know, just the country. Um, you know, there's so many people in so many different geographies, uh, with great ideas, with ambition that are talented that, you know, want to build and, and know their community and know their target market better than, um, better than anybody. Um, but often don't have the capital or don't have the connections or the right resources to actually pull off their idea. So what we're trying to take is what's historically all the resources that have historically been applied to a very specific demographic and a very specific ge- geography and just create a much more inclusive approach. And what happens when we, is when you tell the story of inclusion, naturally, uh, that is exciting to the people who have historically been excluded. So like, if you're talking about Latinx founders that represent, you know, less than way less than 5% of capital, uh, that have been allocated and, and you say like, Hey, you're welcome here. Then naturally a lot, a lot of people show up and we're able to allocate to, to the best of the best. So are you not going to give money to white guys? <laughs> are you giving money to white guys? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So white guys don't, don't sleep. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't sleep. You can be part of the portfolio too. You guys can be part of the Slauson family. We do. We and do. So, have, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say like our, our portfolio certainly over indexes in people of color. I think, you know, 80 plus percent of the founders that we back have, have, you know, a person of color on the founding team, but like, but you know, we, we, we have, Couple CEOs, white guys that, that you have great yeah. ideas and are aligned with what we're doing broadly, and 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 we rock we rock with everybody for inclusive. Everybody eats, okay. as AJ said. Okay, okay, and then and then, um, is it predominantly technology, or is it only technology? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're we're uh, we definitely skew more toward technology companies. So we look at companies that are. Um, that are uh, are in a position to become a category leader is really the the more specific um, um, nuance around what we're looking for. Um, one of the things we talk about is like we 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 want to hear from founders that sound delusional with their vision, but pragmatic with their execution. And <laughs> what that means is like we want people who want to build a massive company, um, and and but we want people that also have a very practical steps in the near term of what they're going to do to start to execute, to actually get there. A lot of times those companies are driven by some technological innovation that opens up doors that then, you know, creates a pathway for that company to be a category leader. Cause if you're saying the same thing as everybody else, then chances are you'll end up where everybody else is. And that's, that's not how venture works. Yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. And then would you say that, um, you guys are focusing only on seed stage investments or across many levels? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we're, we're pre-seed and seed primarily. So okay. we are in a place where we're like, we want to be the first institutional check. In a lot of ways, we act as a bridge between, you know, the communities that we know and care about and grew up in and, and, and Silicon Valley, which we're also pretty well connected to. We got a lot of um, Silicon Valley veterans behind the fund and supporting us and opening up doors for us um, as well. That's founders and investors and corporations um, that that have uh, invested in our fund uh, and want to create pathways. Uh, so, so yeah, so we're very early stage and that's where we see the, the, the greatest opportunity for the approach that we're taking. And, you know, and if we pull that off, then we're beating the shit out of everybody. Yeah, that, that, that's amazing. <laughs> and so I think the, the the real reason why you guys are here today is uh, last year AJ came on and you guys uh, launched a friends and family uh, cohort of entrepreneurs where you were giving them a twenty five thousand dollar grant to help kickstart their business. And so for those that don't know what grant means, that is not an investment. 
in terms of taking equity. It is basically, how would you describe it? Free money? <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that's that's right. So you know, a, a little a little brag story, and that that's exactly what a grant is. It's non dilutive capital. So you know, for us as a seventy five million dollar fund, some people that might not be familiar might think that that's a lot of money. But to Austin's comment earlier, from an AUM standpoint, it ain't shit, right? There's we recognize the 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 limitations of that we would have from investing from a seventy five million dollar fund, given the positions that we take and the way that we get involved. Uh, we are fortunate enough to be. Um, you know, in the company of some people that wanted to kind of direct some of their philanthropic dollars towards, you know, uh, mission aligned causes. And, and we had an incredible relationship with the, with the local nonprofit accelerator that's based here in Los Angeles called Grid 110. Uh, Grid 110 has been around for the better part of the decade. Um, it's, it's, an, it's a business accelerator program. Historically, it was focused on Los Angeles with the pandemic. Um, some things changed. So we were fortunate to be in a position to have a close relationship with them, um, you know, over the co- all of their cohorts. They didn't have any, um, you know, quotas around diversity, but they certainly over index. I believe over 70 percent of the people that have gone through their program um, have been a person of color or a woman and have gone on to, to raise additional um, capital. Uh, one of our first investments as Lawson and Co. as a venture capital firm came from Grid 110. So we certainly see the value in, in, in what the team over there is doing. So we, we, we instead of reinventing the wheel, we thought we would kind of partner with them since they had already kind of been doing this and, and kind of focus on creating their first national effort for what became the Friends and Family Accelerator. So what Friends and Family effectively is, it's 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 an accelerator program. Uh, the, the most popular ones out there to kind of compare it to would be like a Y Combinator or, or a Techstars. Uh, but for us, this is our own flavor. So uh, Slauson & Co. came together with Grudel Intent to create Friends and Family, which is basically a 12-week virtual accelerator program uh, that provides $25,000 in non-dilutive capital, uh, aka free money um, to the companies that are selected, uh, along with a curriculum that is uh, led by people that have achieved mastery in their respective fields. So these are people that have already built category defining companies that have invested in category defining companies and, and are able to kind of provide that unique insight to the people that are able to, to participate in what it is that we're doing. So we, yeah. we ran our first, oh, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Real quickly on the on the guests, I think they're so impressive on who those people are that people potentially have access to or get to listen to speak. Could you share some of those names? Sure. Yeah, we had a couple. We had a you know, I mean, a lot of people came in. One, uh, Jeff Wilkie, who was the former CEO of Amazon Worldwide Consumer, so basically uh, one of the top three folks at Amazon, um, uh, came in and talked about uh, like goal setting and prioritization. Uh, we had Nate, uh, one of the co-founders of Airbnb. Hey, let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, the guys talk about Amazon a lot on the show. You want to name drop some of the things that Jeff might've had a hand in, 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 in <laughs> yeah. hand in getting started? <laughs> We're big Amazon guys here. We're big Amazon guys here. You know that, to- you know that toilet paper you get an hour in two hours? <laughs> Jeff did that. Jeff did that. God Jeff did. did that, right? You know those web services? You know those web services? Yeah. That, that, you know? Jeff did, you know, so, you know, I mean, people like that. Austin was about to say folks like Jonathan Milton Hall, who was CMO of Airbnb, uh, who wow. come in, come, came in previously and led a, a session on purpose driven storytelling, which we all know that if, if you want to be a relevant brand to Gen Z and beyond, you got to give a shit, right? So how do you yeah. teach people on how to do that? Um, we have folks like Jonah Peretti who started companies like BuzzFeed to come in and talk about how to identify and target your customers. Um, so, you know, just incredible people that are coming in and, you know, as we have this structure that we've, you know, uh, collaborated with grid something that they've done a really good job and particularly in building and engaging a community um the slack from our winter 2022 cohort is still popping and these are founders the best type of mentorship that you can get is from people that are in a similar position that are going through a similar lived experience as you are and we found that that's been the most popular thing i mean the most powerful roi that we've got not just from our friends and family cohort but as well as within this loss in a co-portfolio that's amazing. And so you guys are rerunning the program, but this time there's a little special s- section for a group of people called Kathy's. 
Kathy's. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's exactly right. You know, like we're, we're, we're running it back. And, you know, as we have, have taken our learnings, there's a lot of things that went well. Uh, we recognize that there's a lot of incredible communities like the group chat community that has a bunch of talented entrepreneurs that are, are part of them, that are listening, that are consuming the content, that are taking the game that you guys are giving away for free and applying it to their business uh, that we want to tap into. And and, and we, uh, you know, as we were, we were talking, really, it'd be, it'd be dope to be able to offer this opportunity to the Cathy's that are listening. Um, so, you know, we, we, we had, uh, we get a lot of applications um, that we did for our first cohort. So we, we, we anticipate getting that back and we wanted to hold uh, an interview slot for the group chat community for the people that thought that this opportunity might have been um, appropriate for them. I'll actually kick it to Austin to share a little bit more about what the criteria is that we're looking for. Uh, so people are clear on it, you know, know whether or not yeah. friends and family is for them. Yeah. So friends and family is a, a virtual cohort. Um, it's going to be 12 weeks. Uh, it's, it's, it's all virtual, but you do have to be U S based. Uh, I know the group chat community is, is global. So, uh, we, uh, yeah. we, we, we do need folks that are, uh, based in the U S, um, and, and have a business that operates in the U S. Uh, it is called friends and family because in part, we want to help people get from that very, very early, earliest and early stages. So if you've raised more than $250,000 already for your business, then you do not qualify. Uh, we want, we want people that raise less than $250,000. Um, to date. And, um, and then outside of that, it really is just like, we're looking for people with, that are building category defining businesses that just have an idea that, that, that they've turned into a product. Ideally that you have a product in market already. Cause a lot of the stuff that we do in the accelerator is actually very actionable. And so you don't, you won't get as much if it's, if it's still just in the idea phase, you want people to be able to go out there and like immediately apply what they're trying to do rather than make it an academic exercise. Um, so, uh, but if all of those, uh, really those are the primary criteria. So, and, and, and if you fit, if you fit the bill, then we'd, we'd love to see you apply. We're going to have a little section on there about where did you hear that for, and we're going to save a spot for, um, interviews for, um, for folks that, that, that put in that they heard about this from group chat. So, you know, excited to be a, a part of this and, and, and get it out to this community and, and let you guys know about it. And if you want to check it out of where you can find more information, uh, you could go to our website, which is slosson.co or go to off.slosson.co if you, if you, if you want to go directly to the, um, to the website that has the program. But, uh, but the application's up there. Um, it'll be up until the end of September. Um, uh, and it's, it's a quick application. So, um, you just apply, let us know a little bit about, about, uh, about what you do. And, and from a industry standpoint, as long as you guys deem it category defining, it's, it, it's open season. Yeah. Well, I should say we don't really do service-based businesses. So, so it's, it's mainly products and that could be software products. It could be like physical products. We had a greeting card company that does some dope greeting cards, like culturally relevant greeting card last time. And she's killing it by Miss James. If you want to check it out, a little small plug yeah. for that. But then we have, you know, we had a company called church space, which was helping like churches use their, their, their biggest asset, which is the actual space. Um, uh, almost like an Airbnb type type market where other people wow. in the community can utilize the church uh, and available the space that's available within there. Uh, we had a company called El Camino, which is focused on um, women's travel. Um, so a community of women travelers um, uh, being able to safely travel around the world. Um, you know, all all so so wide variety. You could go to the website and then check out some of the folks who we we have participated in before, but it's a, it's a very, very wide variety of folks that we let in. That, that, that's incredible. I mean, first of all, all those ideas are really good. <laughs> we, we, we narrowed it down uh, a lot of applications and, that, and that's why yeah. we wanted to give the, the group chat, like, you know, a very clear pathway to, 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 to getting to us to make sure that they get noticed. 
So, Kathy's, it's really simple. Go to slosson.co or off.slosson.co. Yeah, let's, let's not make it, let's just make it off.slosson.co. <laughs> and then if, and if you, uh, if you go to uh, down at the bottom where it says, please select if you are affiliated with any of the following organizations, make sure you click on group chat. And that way we know that you're, you're a Kathy and, you know, we'll, we'll certainly factor that into our, our process. That's incredible. So $25,000, you get to be in the virtual cohort for 12 weeks. And then, you know, if you crush it, who knows, Slauson Co. might uh, lead your seed round. <laughs> it's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> Anything's possible. <laughs> Enter the code, code group chat and get $2 million. From Slauson Co. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for signing that up. No, no, you said it. You said it right there. <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, that's the, the best discount code ever. <laughs> well, we're, we're totally well, having um, to set up that partnership if you if you want to write the check. Uh, the, so. I don't got the money. Um, uh, well, well, this is incredible, guys. Thank you so much, and I'm sure um, I'm excited to see all the applications that come through from our community. Uh, if if uh, people want to reach out to you guys, are you guys uh, a, a LinkedIn, Twitter? What yeah. are, what are yeah. the, AJ <laughs> tweets a lot. Yeah, that's the consensus. Uh, if you go to at Slauson and Co on Twitter and Instagram, that's probably the easiest way to slide in our DMs. Uh, Austin is just... I don't know your handles actually. Yeah. Say. <laughs> it's, a, it's all over. I'm Austin LAC on Twitter and I'm actually not okay, on okay. Instagram. No. Oh, so, uh, but, uh, <laughs> and then, and then, you jumped off. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, ju- I jumped <laughs> off. I jumped off. And then, and then, um, but, and if you want to email us, it's meet us at slawson.co if you, if you want to, want to pitch, but, uh, for the, or have any specific questions about the, the, um, the program. But, um, uh, so yeah. So ha- ha- always happy to, happy to, to be in touch with folks. So if yeah. you think that we might be a good fit or if some we set a line, then yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on the second year of doing this. And uh, obviously all the stuff that you guys do in LA and the community is huge and making a, a real impact on uh, the future of entrepreneurship. Yep. So appreciate it. I mean, and, and, you know, we're trying to work with folks across the country. So we, we, we did it last time, and you know, everywhere from LA to Tulsa to, to New York and Atlanta and so on and so forth. Want to make sure we continue that too. And then eventually we'll be global like group chat, but uh, <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks guys. All right. All right thanks thanks a lot. Hey, D, you want to talk about some news? Let's get into it. What's Let's going into on it. in we the got world? A lot. Yeah, we got a lot going on. Uh, you know, we had our interview. So we're going to try to rifle through speed round of group chat because uh, yeah. we got a lot to talk about and it all seems very relevant. Yep. Okay. First things first, Queen Elizabeth has passed away at the age of 96. Here's my take. She was killing it, like right up until the final day. You know, like she, last I remember, it seems like not that long ago, she beat COVID. She yeah. was out and about, fancy clothes, doing her thing, looking like uh, the woman in charge. She, um, I mean, that's, I just, I hope that I'm similar. Like, I hope I'm out, I'm well dressed, I'm looking good right up until the last day. Yeah. Uh, you know, in 96 isn't so bad. It's, it's, I mean, obviously, living to 96 in itself is such a huge accomplishment, I think, just yeah. in life. Uh, uh, it's really interesting, like, people's uh, reaction to it. Yep. It's a very polarizing thing. There's obviously people that, like, adore the royal family and are mourning her death. Uh, uh, Operation London Bridge is what happens in this case when... Uh, the queen passes and so they're going to mourn um um for 10 days as a country yep. and you know i'm sure if you live in england it's probably a divisive thing you either treasure it and think oh wow it's a part of our history or yep. you are like why do we revere these people um can you explain th- to me like real quick cuz i guess i don't fully understand it like like what's the uh, 
because I saw a lot of backlash too. Yeah. And like there was that one, did you see the tweet that Jeff Bezos retweeted that like horrendous yeah. tweet from that yeah. one? <laughs> oh my God. Um, but like, wh- what's the backlash? Like, is it that, is it like the, the monarchy is stupid? Like what's the negative? So I think, I think the, the negatives are that it represents like this colonial mm-hmm. England that ruled the world and basically did anything and everything to gain power. And that that's what the monarchy represents. Okay. Um, there's also, you know, today the royal family is more of a figurehead that focuses yep. on like philanthropic stuff. Uh, but to be fair, for the rest of the world, the royal family is the biggest thing still. And whether... Kind of like, uh, like the... It's like they're Kardashians, you know? It, it really is. I mean, there's... <laughs> it's like what keeps it interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, what yeah. else do you... Like, yeah. I'm sorry, UK, but like, what else, you know? Like, that's you like You got their, anything else that we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's always something from the royal family in the news. People are obsessed about it. And the like thing the about face is, of it, you know, like that, that's yeah. why I just, I want to, I don't want to diss it too hard because I do, the UK is great. I love it. But like, yeah. it is kind of like without your representative... You know, I don't know. There's not yeah, as much I mean, action. Kim Kardashian is our queen. They have Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. It's the same that's thing. Fair. Like, yeah. Who, yeah. who, Americans obsess over Kim Kardashian and the rest of the world. You better believe if Kim passes away, we're doing 10 days of mourning over here. 10 days? I'm talking, it might <laughs> ten be 10 months. Ten months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the, so like, one, I don't like like these like, you know, it's just, it's just disrespectful when someone dies, period. Like, yeah. you know, to, to even talk like that. Um, yeah. And, and if you actually like, as far as like, um, you know, royal family members are concerned, like Queen Elizabeth, given she was a queen for 70 years. That's wild. She became queen when she was 26 years old. And, and so... Can you imagine what she experienced and what she had to go through? And 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 obviously you can argue, oh, they're not progressive at all. But like given where she started yeah. and where the world is at, it's pretty yeah. stark difference. And obviously everyone loves to say, we need change, we need change. But like change takes forever. Yeah. Change takes generations. Yeah. Um, and so now um, her son... Uh, Prince Charles is now the king. That's King Charles now. Um, and then King Charles' son, William, is next in command. Mm-hmm. And then below him is his son, uh, Prince George. So, wow. uh, it's, it's pretty like a wild. Real, you know, it's like a Netflix series. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, I think it's pretty, uh, it's, it's obviously global news. Uh, and if you go all over the world, everyone knows who the queen was. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not a very famous figure. Yeah. Um, and so I'm curious to see, does the interest change with now King Charles there or does it actually get spicier? Cause this is Princess Diana's ex-husband yeah. and you know, he ended up, uh, having an affair who's now his wife camilla like it's it is there's Spicy. drama they got prince yeah. andrew you know i got a notice that uh harry was going back to the castle this morning and Meghan markle was not wow like which i thought was fucking wild <laughs> yeah let's spice it up man that's the best thing they could do for um you know for the country is just like keep things spicy yeah, I mean, like, I get it. I understand why it annoys people and pisses people off, but it is what it is. It's not going anywhere. So, you might as well join the fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly, I think, the right take. <laughs> you know, because, like, even for me, like, in, in all actuality, I don't fucking... I, it seems silly to me, like, the whole thing. But at the same time, like I said, it's their representative. I get it. It's anytime someone dies, you shouldn't be disrespectful. Um but just fucking, yeah, I don't know. I'm just here for the show. It's the same thing. It's like people who like get so mad about the Kardashians and Jenner. Just enjoy them. You're not going to change it. You it's, know what I mean? They're going to be bigger than ever for the yeah. rest of all of your lives. Soak it in. And now Kim's about to be the world's biggest, you know, venture capitalist. So <laughs> no, private equity. Private equity. She so skipped buckle a step. up. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, totally right. So, so, so like, I, yeah, that I just don't, I don't like those like visceral reactions of like, ah, I hate them. They're the worst thing. They're, they're here. 
Yeah. I enjoy the Kardashian Jenner. I love the everything that they stand, represent it's yeah. it's it's great it's great content love everything that they represent it's uh, what am i, I gonna it. do i can't I fight it. it i'm not gonna yeah. sit there and fight it and say it's silly it is what it is i'd rather enjoy it than, than get angry about it same yeah. with the royal family like enjoy it for what it is it doesn't actually impact your daily life and At neither all. do the kardashians and jenna like, At all. just accept your accept it and enjoy it for yeah. good content enjoy the show yeah. I just feel like we, you know, we, we've said this a million times. It's obviously the no shit like comment of the year, but like we just live in an age where everything has to be like everyone's got to have a take. Everyone's got to trash it. Everyone's yeah. got like I went on Twitter this morning, which was really stupid of me. And yeah. um, everyone, yeah, everyone has a take, you know, everyone has a hot take or a, like they're outraged or this crazy woman that wrote yeah. this horrendous tweet. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, shut up, you know, like just, yeah. You know, this is the time when I miss the days of like four news networks and yeah, it was just like, yeah. hey, the queen died. And you're like, oh shit, that's crazy. And then, you know what I mean? You're just like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I mean, The Crown is one of the biggest shows ever in Netflix history for yeah. a reason. People yeah. are obsessed with it. By the way, The Crown is an incredible show. Incredible. What's that on? Amazon? I know, Netflix. I haven't watched it. It's basically Queen Elizabeth's life. Like, it's incredible. Well, I'm saying... The best thing that country could do is put reality cameras in that in that place. <laughs> that palace. <laughs> that thing would be blockbuster and it would be like, can you imagine the difference in one year of like the oh. group outside of the royal palace today yeah. versus one year after a Netflix series? Oh my God. <laughs> It'd be the most famous thing in the world. I will say when I walked around, when we went to London for uh, Anand's thing, I walked around town with AJ and really the only place we went was there, was to the royal palace. The Buckingham just, Palace, yeah. Yeah, just look through the gates and like, all I right. I mean, I was, I was, we were randomly there as a family when Buckingham Palace was open to the public because of a fire and they needed to raise money. And I don't know what, it, for one, one reason or the other, it was open to the public and we got to go inside of it. I mean, wow. it, it's, it was, it was amazing. Like, yeah. it's like, it, whether these are the things that like this, these things are a part of our history. Like, you might as well, yeah uh, what a weird way show. to live it's so weird yeah. that in the same time in 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 human life you can be like a professional tiktoker living in like the hype house in la or you can be like a royal living in a palace in england like imagine their <laughs> weird world you know like it's so strange yeah i mean it, it, it the whole thing is wild um but r.i.p yeah r.i.p um okay next up uh, Elon has been talking about this for a long time. The new problem um, that's even, he, I'll say Elon's claiming because I'm no expert, that's more severe than climate change than any of the things that really threatens humanity is population collapse. Mm -hmm. um, so, it is a, apparently a very, very real problem. You can look at the numbers. You can look at the um, reproduction rates. It definitely looks like a clear problem but yep. the number one kind of leader in this problem is china because china for a very long time had a one child policy uh then they i think how long ago a decade ago bumped it up to a two child policy now they're pushing for three trying to like oh shit turn it around but you now know it's so like an long, orgy now policy. literally yeah orgy <laughs> policy friday orgies and um so they're obviously going to be kind of the leading you know one in trouble here and things are looking a little sketchy it's crazy. So, this chart here is predicting by 2100, a 47% decline in population in China. I mean, why are in we even worried about these guys, you know? Just Bulgaria, let their time run out. Bulgaria and Serbia, 57%. South Korea, 54%. Croatia, 48%. Japan, 41%. Greece, Italy, 38 39%. So, I mean, some of these countries will clearly benefit from the population decline because they probably didn't have the infrastructure to scale. Yeah. China built the infrastructure first for a billion and a half people. Yeah. There's and, like and, empty cities there already. Yeah. And, and, and like, can you imagine just invest, like, you know, you hear like Sequoia and all these huge funds have like big China funds. And part of their thesis is we have to be in this country and we have to invest in China because... The population is so big. So, when you solve these problems, the scale of these businesses are enormous. Yeah. But 
When but you, why did they do one child policy? Like, it seems like pretty basic math that that was going to get you into trouble. But was there another reason why they did it? Yeah. I mean, look, I think they, they felt that they couldn't control population gro- growth and it would have eventually crumbled their infrastructure, which is what's yeah. happening in India, right? Like, the, in, there's, they, India could, can never have the infrastructure of China. It's impossible. Yeah. It's yeah. so far gone. So, I think in th- principle, they had the right idea. Their biggest flaws are a couple of things. One is they basically train society that one child, one child is great and it's going to take generations yeah. for people to have like the confidence to have another kid yeah, or even have, have the time. desire, right? Like, oh, one kid's great. You can just leave your house and, with, you know, in a regular car, yeah. you need a minivan. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like whatever, one right? One stroller, like, yeah. One stroller, one snack, one nap. It's yep. just like- All I need is one you know, nap. One nap policy. It's like yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, I think I think they thought they were doing the right thing for that time period. And they thought they could probably just incentivize people. And there are incentives to have more children now in China. The problem is, is it's just, it's going to be a cultural shift. The yep. other problem is all of these countries we're talking about are very anti-immigration. Yeah. So they're very homogenous societies. They don't encourage immigration. There's no immigration in China. Like no one is moving there to live there, right? Like at scale. And so the countries that are experiencing growth, like the United States um, and and, and a number of other countries that uh, like, you know, Great Britain and things like that, they are pro-immigration. Immigration, Immigration, whether you like it or not, helps with like a dynamic environment of interesting people that create opportunity and grow your population and obviously for the yeah the american experiment it has worked so yep. I, when i think about it could china ever have a a pro immigration policy where like people are like yeah you know me and the kids we're moving to guangzhou yeah i think it's part of the problem when you want so much control you know like yeah to me these are kind of signs of like control gone bad and like I think allowing so much immigration kind of feels like a lack of control and more than one child and now you're getting a little hairy. You know, like it just feels like um, it feels like some of the side effects of wanting so much control over the details of your society. Yeah. But but do you think a company, I mean, a country like China has the foresight to, I mean, because you think about like they're having the the... Uyghur uh, Muslim yeah. crisis, and they're obviously not pro that group of people. That's what I'm saying. If you if you open immigration, you you have non Chinese people then. And I just don't think it's very appetizing. Like maybe I'm wrong, and there's another reason why. Like it's because they keep it so clamped down that immigration isn't that big. But China doesn't strike me as like incredibly welcoming. No, in general, because of the Uyghurs, because of the. Um, Control. Just what they do when you see people like having whole lockdowns and COVID zero, like you're going to have COVID zero, but open up immigration. There's no chance. Like, yeah, it just doesn't seem like a very, we see what's happening in Hong Kong. Like it doesn't seem like a place you'd really be like super excited to go live, at least as an American. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not talking about American, but like, can you get Indians? Can you get Africans? Can you get South Americans who do yeah. have huge population growth that are experiencing and are they just have for, to let go of their yeah. crazy control. You can't do zero COVID and let all those people in. You got to give it up. Yeah. I mean, you let a bunch <laughs> of Indians in there, you, it's going to get chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to just get over it. You got to just have the hard year. Yeah. You got to get rid of the COVID zero policy and then let people in. I. It's just, what are they going to do when China's just all fucking senior citizens? That's yeah. why I'm not so worried. We're so worried about China. It's going to be a fucking old folks home here pretty soon. <laughs> what are you worried about? You go, you go, the, even like their basketball league, the average age is like 55. Literally. Because you got no kids anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're trying to figure out robots. They're not going to have any fucking soldiers. I mean, think about the impact, not only for China, but the it has on the world that there's going to be this like, tiny po- a shrinking population in china of yeah. you know manufacturers uh yeah. you know cheaper unskilled labor like it's gonna have a profound impact on the world yeah massively 
I'll tell you what, though, if I'm Disneyland, I'm opening a few more parks because there's going to be kids like fucking crazy. <laughs> you know, there's about to be 20 years of just kids. Because D- you Disney- know China's going to, whatever yeah. they got to do, they're going to force, like they could force people to have kids. They want to yeah. force you to have four kids. They will. Yeah. Um, the general's coming to your house tonight. He's going to watch you guys procreate. Yeah. He's going to observe. We need a- He's an observer. Make sure you guys are doing a good job. And then you go to the next building, the next apartment. Yeah, you're going to have like a light on your doorstep when you're ovulating. <laughs> Time to All fuck. All right, go check in. You guys better be fucking in there. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I mean, you're going to have to. And we all know that like they will, there's no hesitation to do something like that. I feel like it could get pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I, yeah, I, I would, I mean, whoever's thinking about this in that country, what a job. What a job. It's, yeah. So, it's going to be a weird situation. Because <laughs> I think, you know, like we, we kind of, everyone kind of commented a long time ago about one child policy. Like it's pretty like severe. It's pretty whatever. Like to us Americans, it feels kind of crazy. But the reality is we are now facing, they are now facing the opposite. We know that they're not scared to enforce anything. So, why wouldn't they have some weird yeah. four child minimum? Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Um, next up, OpenSea. It's just in shambles. I mean, I don't know if we talked about this or not. Their trading volume's down 99% since May. Um, mm-hmm. It's just rough. It's it's a bloodbath. I mean, I don't... In my lifetime, I have never seen something that so many people were so sure of that was such a gold rush that so quickly like disintegrated. So you know on what I mean? May 1st, I've seen, we've seen trends. Is, we've seen... You know what I mean? But this is wild. On May 1st of this year... OpenSea processed a record 2.7 billion in NFT transactions. And two weeks ago, it processed on a Sunday, $9 million. The company- Have you ever seen anything? Have you ever seen anything that much volume get wiped and a sort of a trend driven, like where everyone was so sure and then just crickets? Yeah, like the dot com bubble was, is very similar because it was these huge, big dollar numbers, but the actual number of people on the internet was very, very minimal. And this is the same problem. So, but like, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah, isn't it? Doesn't it feel like more regular people were involved in NFTs? Like no, more I, regular people were, were trying I'll to buy give an them. Example. And, the, uh, th- and this is only on OpenSea, right? This isn't like all the NFT platforms aggregated. Yeah. Okay. On Sunday, whatever, two Sundays ago, 24,000 users. Um, and they said when the record transactions hit, it was just a third fewer. So, it wasn't a lot of people to begin with. Yeah. It was yeah. being manipulated by a few groups of people. And so, yeah. what happened was the numbers looked huge, but it was just you and me going back and forth. Yeah, that's Manipulating true. the price of NFTs. That's why the whole thing was a sham. It's is really like it, hot potato. Like, imagine if we were doing that and then the market crashed and you just happened to have the bag. On that day. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, ah, come on, man. Split it. <laughs> Split it with me, bro. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think that's, that's, that's what happened is that like the numbers were big, the headlines were big, and the communication was big. But it was actually nobody. Yeah. I'll tell you what, there's definitely some like YouTubers, gamers, like whatever, they just got creamed. Like I think even like Logan and Jake Paul have talked about it pretty openly. I think <clears throat> I thought FaZe Banks talked about it. Like those kids, some of those kids lost millions of dollars because they were the main ones shuffling yeah. this shit around. Yeah, I think look, what happened was like always, everyone who jumped in at the end gets burned. Like when yep. it reached that fever pitch pop culture mania yeah. people went and took a, a thing and you know i think the counter to it is is nine million dollars a day in nft transaction on open sea is still a shitload yeah and it's probably the right number given the interest level yeah. um it's now like but it's still only twenty four thousand users that's nobody that's nobody that's so crazy i just feel bad for like the guy or girl who cashed out and bought, you know, like saw all the action happening, saw whatever, bought an ape. I mean, I don't know how much apes are down. I know it's not insane, but it's like half or something I thought. Yeah, Um, it's definitely down more than half. 
you know, cash out and said, fuck it, I'm going to go big on this thing. This is my moment. Like, I feel yeah. like there was a lot, like a insane amount of people last year that like thought their moment was finally here. Like, I'm going to yeah. go all in on crypto. I'm going to go all in on NFT. Like, this is my moment. Like, I'm going to put my $10,000 savings yeah. into this thing. And there has to be a lot of people that just got wiped. Yeah, look, th th at the end of the day, like, there's no such thing as easy money. Everything no. is painfully hard. Uh, if it looks too good to be true, it is. Yeah. And then, you know, when you look at like historical, who's one of the best investors? Warren Buffett. Just Slow and steady Drinking Buffett. his Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Finally having, bought some Apple stock. <laughs> finally bought. After he knew for sure Apple was going to be around, yeah. he went and bought it. Because yeah. he's like, I don't, I'm not taking any risk. And, okay. and I think ultimately that is probably the right approach for 99% of the population. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's talk about hacks real quick. Uh, you know, there's been a few stories lately about hacks in the crypto world, um, people getting their coins stolen and um, different platforms getting hacked and stuff like that. Axie Infinity, a platform that we've talked about a lot on, uh, on this pod, um, had a hack. And <laughs> it looks like the US government jumped in and has recovered $30 million um, of stolen money from and this hack. Sounds so like they know, needed a ledger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. <laughs> I, first of all, $600 million was taken. They only recovered $30 million. Yeah, that's rough. I didn't tell that's that nothing. part of the story. 15%. I gave the optimistic view. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, 5%, sorry, 5%. Yeah. I mean, it's literally nothing. And so, you know, it just goes back to what we were saying on the previous thing, like such early days in crypto. And I'm not one to like not think it's not part of our future. It definitely is. There's a lot of money and a lot of smart people in it. You yeah. just have to play it safe. Like yeah. you don't need to be doing everything and anything. If you just, if you want exposure to it, buy some Ethereum, cop a ledger, save yeah. it there and don't look at it like that's yeah, probably just, it the sounds like everyone's just got to calm down like just yeah just buy a couple smart stocks buy some crypto yeah. put it on your ledger yeah just chill out it's dangerous out there it really is and i think you know very similar to the early days of anything it's the wild wild west yeah and so in the Wild West, because I am watching that, I watched an episode of that 1883, which is the precursor to Yellowstone. Holy <laughs> shit, the Wild West was, I get the name now. It just was just, people just like get, wake up and just shoot just each shoot other. Shoot each other, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And I think that's where we're at in crypto is that like, it just, you could wake up and everything's gone. Yeah. Just get shot in the face with a in a yeah. duel yeah exactly yeah. and so like w this is why like you know we we obviously are big fans of ledger and what they're building is because if you if you have a tool like in the wild west when you were digging for gold you needed a safe otherwise yeah. your gold got jacked <laughs> yes, there you go yeah and that's true. what this is it's like this is the wild west and you need your safe so you go to ledger you buy a nano and you save your you save your ass your when yeah. the gunslingers come out. Yeah, that's the gun, the modern gunslinger can affect way more pain through hacking than through yeah. physical violence. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. And straight well, up, you go. like. Well, for the record, if you go to shop.ledger.com, uh, you can grab yourself a safe. Yeah. Before the fucking gunslinging starts. <laughs> yeah, check out Ledger, shop.ledger.com. I mean, these stories are just such good reminders uh, with how risky it is anyway. You'd hate to actually, you know, make a good bet or have some real savings in there and then just have it get wiped out. So, not your keys, not your coins. And and just, just a reminder, you can buy, sell, and do other crypto transaction services on Ledger Live and their partners. Ledger does not provide any advice or recommendations on the use of these services. Uh, but we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just <That's> kidding. <laughs> it's just for legal reasons. That was a total joke. Yeah. Yep. So check them out. Shop.ledger.com. Uh, you want to know who is doing a lot of buying and selling and transacting? Who? Kim K. 
she has jumped in. I kind of mentioned it earlier in the episode, but she has announced um, Sky Partners. Is it called Sky Partners? Yep. She's announced Sky Partners with two Ks. Um, it is her private equity firm. She has launched a private equity firm. She is going to be focusing, it looks like, mainly on the media uh, and consumer space. She partnered mm-hmm. up with a guy. This guy's a Carlisle partner. Ex Carlisle partner, Jay Sammons. There you go. So she's got a legit guy in her corner. I mean, this is big news. This was all over, you know, obviously social and everywhere. And it just so happened to really hit my social because I happened to follow like a combo of like pop culture news and like investment stuff. So everyone was just going nuts. Um, I mean, gee, I, I don't know. In my mind, it's like a zero critique. I, I have zero criticism here. I have zero, like Kim Kardashian. Whether you like it or not, like we talked about earlier, is the new, like, I don't even know, like Oprah mixed with, mixed with, I don't even know what. She's literally a, a media, she's as big as it gets in media. In, in Yeah, and I think she, it's not just media. She is a money-making machine. Yeah. Right? Like, she has the reach through the television shows and uh, social media. But then she has clearly made an enormous impact on consumption. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people that have reach, very few people that have influence. And yep. even in this era of influencers, most people can't sell anything. One million percent. And like to clarify, when I say Oprah, I don't mean that it's necessarily the same quality or whatever. So don't jump on me about that, uh, listeners. But the point is like, when it comes to the new media landscape and e-commerce and launching brands, and when you talk about consumption, it's literally consumption of hours of content as well as actual hard goods. Nobody in the world is even close. And so why wouldn't the person who has proven to be the absolute best at it make this move? I, I just, what's she going to do? Start five more brands? Why not just invest yeah. and advise and be a part of the next skims from behind the scenes and be a part of the next seven makeup brands and the next like this is yeah i mean like i know a lot of people in private equity i'm friends with a lot of people in private equity Uh, most of them are not making an impact on their investments they're just not yeah and so kim at least brings in her name and her clout to the conversation yeah kim makes an investment in a business a hundred million people at least are going to take a look at it yeah. Whether they engage or buy or whatever, that's another story. But if if they do this right, like if Kim Kardashian invests in a plant-based fast food restaurant, you don't think all of us aren't going to check it out at least once? Oh, yeah. And can you imagine, <laughs> even if Kim Kardashian said, okay, I'm inve- investing in this plant-based uh, fast food restaurant, I'm not going to say a word about it. Yeah. But the amount of people and celebrities that she could get to go there and the favors and the write-ups and the yeah. and the social media advising and the, like, it would be, you, there's no better, I mean, we're in, we've been in this business for a long time. You would have to piece together a non-existent dream team of like PR, influencer, celebrity, you know, whatever with the people that would just gladly do her a favor. Yeah. No, it would be nuts. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't, I I actually didn't really see any criticism here. Um, I think everyone, at least on my, in my world kind of um, said like, yeah, no shit. But I don't know if there is any backlash. It just feels to me like, It feels to me like a perfect move. All right. There we go. Um, Okay, that's all we got. Yeah, we'll see you Sunday. Um, We'll see you Sunday. We're out of here. Um, Thank you for listening and have a good rest of your week. 